lights are on and you are ready, the life begins. Are you prepared for a live show? Always we must be prepared and then the show becomes successful. Welcome once again to News Analysis. News Analysis, a weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with the main points in a nutshell. Eurozone deal reach without UK. Kolkata hospital fire in Kolkata kills dozens. UN's Ban Ki Moon in Mogadishu on Somalia visit. Key report on India anti corruption Lokpal Bill table. Russian Twitter political protest swelled by spam. Levels an inquiry, private data theft, extremely serious. And now the news in detail. Eurozone deal reached without UK, but a German and French attempt to get all 27 European Union states to back changes to the Union treaties was dropped after objections from the UK. Prime Minister David Cameron had insisted on an exemption for the UK from some financial regulations. Instead, 23 states, including Eurozone members, will adopt an accord with penalties for breaking deficit rules. We wish them, Eurozone states, well because we want everyone to sort out their problems because we all need that economic growth, Mr. Cameron continued. But at the end of the day, I made my judgment and that it was not in Britain's interest to take part. I effectively wielded a veto. The new tougher rules on spending and budgets will now be backed not by a European Union treaty but by a treaty between the governments. It will be quicker to set up but it may prove less rigorous, says the BBC's Europe editor Gravin Hewitt in Brussels. But he says Europe has taken a big step towards a closer integration with binding rules over tax and spending and sanctions against countries that overspend. Discussions on the details of the new fiscal arrangements are due to resume shortly. European Union leaders aim to have the pact ready by March. Among the measures agreed on, leaders pledged to provide more money for the International Monetary Fund, IMF, to fund bailouts. The deal, though, failed to lift the markets, which are still hoping for more intervention by European Central Bank, ECB, and European stocks opened slightly down on Friday. Nearly 10 hours of talks could not produce an agreement involving all member states. Instead, the 17 member of the Eurozone will work on separate deal outside European treaties. They will be joined by at least six and possibly eight other countries. The UK and Hungary will play no part in a new intergovernment agreement, while Sweden and Czech Republic will consult their parliaments before making a decision. Mr. Sarkozy said sticking point bear Mr. Cameron's insistence on a protocol allowing London to opt out on proposed change on financial services. We could not accept this, he said. UK Foreign Secretary William Haig, though, said Mr. Cameron had been very sensible, accusing European Union countries of not doing enough to meet Britain's concerns. What they have I mean, the European Union leaders committed themselves to here is something giving up more national control over the budgets and us standing apart from that is not being isolated from them. It's a very sensible thing to stand apart from that, he told the reporters. 
Well, what I've done is made sure that Britain's interests are protected. There was a treaty on the table, a treaty that would have meant a lot of loss of sovereignty for countries around Europe, a lot of changes in the European Union, a lot of extra bureaucracy and lawmaking, and it didn't have sufficient safeguards for Britain, so I wasn't prepared to support it. But in practical terms, what could they have done to Britain that uh, they now can't do? Well, the point is that we remain in the single market. That's vital for Britain. We're a trading nation. We need Europe's markets open. We need clear ways of rules being set and adjudicated. We're in or out, and that, that. No, no. So we, we maintain that position, and those institutions and that market is properly protected for Britain. If we had allowed a new treaty within a treaty, uh, without proper safeguards, that could have put, been put in jeopardy. And I wasn't prepared in, to in let that way? happen. Just give us an example. Well, obviously, instead of having a new treaty with lots of extra obligations, mostly for other member states, but always a danger of Britain getting d dragged in, that is not going to take place. Well, the fact of the matter is, you exercised brinkmanship last night and you discovered that you were Dave Nomades, didn't you? No, not at all. I mean, look, it's of course there are times in European diplomacy when you're in a room, you want to protect Britain's interests. Everyone else is saying to you, give up your national interests, don't defend. Uh, the things you want to defend in your own country, just come along with everybody else and sign up to it. And there are times you have to say, I'm afraid this is my bottom line. I said to people in Britain, if I couldn't get a treaty that was good for Britain, I wouldn't sign up to it. And I was good for my word. Well, we're not being excluded. We are in the European Union. We're a leading member of the single market. When, when it comes to defence, we're the leading member of NATO. Uh, when it comes to uh, driving forward European foreign policy, we're actually one of the leading players of that. But no, we're not in the single currency. We don't want to be in the single currency. We're not in the Schengen No Borders Agreement. And I'm glad we're not in that because I want us to use our borders to protect us against illegal immigration, guns and drugs. So yes, it is right. For Britain to pursue her national interests and to work out which things we do want to play a leading role in and which ones we don't. But I put it back. Yeah. Kolkata hospital fire in Kolkata kills dozens. At least 73 people have been killed in a fire that broke out in a hospital in eastern Indian city of Kolkata, officials say. Most of the victims were patients who were trapped after the flames spread through Emory Hospital in the southern part of the city. The fire started early on Friday in the multi-story hospital basement where flammable materials were stored. Fire engines fought a blaze for five hours before bringing it under control. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamada Banerjee said the license of the six-story hospital in Dhakuria has been cancelled. She said fire was an unforgivable crime and that those responsible would be given the harshest punishment. A. Ubadhya, a senior vice president of the Ambry Hospital Company, told Associated Press there were 160 patients in the 190-bed hospital. West Bengal Urban Development Minister Furhal Hikim said many of the patients who died had suffocated on fumes. A number were rescued. We have taken 50 patients to an adjacent hospital. The situation is grim at the moment, Fire Brigade Chief Gopal Matajari told Agents France Press News Agency. Reporters in Calcutta says bodies of patients has been wrapped in white sheets have been bought by rescue workers. Local people climbed into the hospital compound to rescue the patients before the fire engines arrived. Reporter says the narrow surrounding streets made it difficult for the rescue services to arrive quickly. There were chaotic scenes when Ms. Banerjee arrived at the hospital. Relatives of patients complained that her convoy had blocked the passage of ambulances in the hospital complex. Police resorted to a baton charge as the crowds moved towards Ms. Banerjee's car. Stop it. What is this? No bad in charge. Have you come here to beat up the people? The Times of Indian newspaper quarter Ms. Banerjee is telling the officers. The fire had spread swiftly from the basement to upper floors of the private hospital. Television pictures showed patients being carried out on stretchers. One rescued patient said, The attachments woke me up, dragged me down the stairs. I saw 10, 15 patients at the top of the stairs trying to get down. Ananya Das, 35, who underwent surgery at the hospital on Thursday, said she was recovering when the fire broke out. 
I managed to walk towards the exit and then climb out the window. I saw a lot of bodies, she said. One relative, Kakon Chakravarti, told AFP, My mother is in the intensive unit. She is 70 years old. I don't know whether she is alive or not. Fires in high-rise buildings are fairly common in the city. There have been at least 10 major incidents since 2008. Electrical short circuits have been responsible for most of these fires. UN's Ban Ki-moon in Mogadishu on Somalia visit. The UN office for Somalia is moving to Mogadishu from Nairobi. UN head Ban Ki-moon has announced on a rare visit to Somali capital. The UN Secretary General is the highest ranking foreign official to visit the war torn city for many years. He was wearing a bulletproof vest as he was welcomed at the airport by Somalia's Prime Minister. Islamist militants are battling the forces of UN backed government and African Union troops. Somalia has been wracked by a war for two decades and has not had a functioning national government since 1991. Mr. Ban's visit comes a day after the fiercest clashes in the city for several months. All major roads in the city were closed and flights in and out of Mogadishu were cancelled for security reasons. Mr. Ban was expected to discuss the political situation in Somalia as well as the famine which has been declared in some southern areas following a severe drought. Daily booming, says reporters, has raced through the city's quiet streets to the presidential palace in a convoy of armored personal carriers. Militant group Al-Shabaab said in August that it was pulling out of Mogadishu, but it has since staged several attacks on the city, and Mr. Ban's visit was kept secret until after his arrival. Al-Shabaab, which has links with Al-Qaeda, controls many southern and central areas of the country. Some donors accuse the government of spending too much time squabbling and not enough time improving the lives of ordinary people. First time since the Djibouti Peace Agreement of 2008, there is a significantly more inclusive political process and the consensus of how to end the transition. It is time now for the traditional federal institutions and Somalia's leaders